In our daily life, each and every one of us are constantly faced with these different situations that we have to choose between doing the right thing or the easy thing. Sometimes it's easy to do the right thing and sometimes it can be pretty difficult. But the bigger question that we are faced with is how far are we willing to go? How much are we willing to sacrifice for what we believe is right? A Hidden Life is the title of famed director Trance Malik's last film, and it's one of those films that seems very simple on the outside. It narration doesn't have lots of plot points, characters doesn't have any ambiguous and complicated agenda, and the situation is very simple and straightforward. You may even get bored during its 174 minute runtime and be like, come on Trance, I could tell the story in 30 minutes, but that's well, just the outside. The story follows Franz, head of a modest family in an Austrian village. They lead a simple life as a family which is full of love. In the beginning, it seems nothing can disturb this peaceful aura that has surrounded Franz and his family, and their problems are narrowed down to earning a living and keeping the family healthy. But then comes the World War II. A war which has nothing to do with them and their simple village life, and even if it does, it's only of the ideological nature. Under this ideology, all village men have to and are in fact expected to cooperate, fight for, and share their resources with their ally, Nazi Germany. But France, according to his personal ethics, refuses to engage in war and bloodshed. Not to forget his loyal wife, who supports his husband's decision in the hardships that are to follow. A decision that is condemned by the society even the small village society. Beneath this simple plot lies Malik's rich spiritual subtext. I say spiritual, not religious, because religion is represented as church. Here, we are talking about a metaphysical, infinite being, which makes a man suffer and also reach for redemption. According to Soren Kierkegaard, Danish philosopher from 19th century, a human being lives and makes his or her decisions under three rubrics, the aesthetic, the ethical, and the religious. In a life based on aesthetics, a person lives by and decides according to his human needs of pleasure, comfort, and survival. Enjoying life comes first. A person living by ethics lives by and decides based on the norms and expectations of time and society he or she lives in. In every society there are a set of objective rules that are claimed to be the truth and the only reasonable and just way to live. These rules are usually written and made clear by government, religion, family, or any other party that has power over the person. Then Kierkegaard talks about a third way, religious, or as I said before, the spiritual way of living. Here, the person acts based on an infinite sources of his being. His ethics are not objective and outside of him. But he himself, as an infinite being, has to decide and act based on his judgment in this specific situation. A kind of subjective morale which can't be spoken as a set of rules for every situation, but comes from the heart, based on the exact moment and situation the person is going through. The main subtextual conflict of the film is this decision based on faith. Every logical reason, religious institution, meaning the church and social norms, goes against Fran's decision. Society expects him to join his brothers in arms and fight for motherland. 
there is even a stronger reason for France to join the war. His and his family's welfare and survival. One may ask France as Kierkegaard asks Abraham when he was supposed to kill his son, what in the world is more precious than the life of your family? But the man of faith doesn't act according to reason. His criteria is his godly conscience, his infinite being. France's journey resembles the journey of Jesus Christ. As soon as he decides, his passion begins, and like Jesus, his main suffering is not of physical origin, but in his mind. Doubt is his pain. The path of faith is craved out of pain and suffering, because in it, the finite body acts based on an infinite urge. This proud structure of meat and bones has to go through a lot to be the home of infinite. It has to go through a lot to forget itself. So the body, the self, who craves survival, tries to get rid of the faith by doubt, by temptation of lust, pleasure, and logic. As Kierkegaard believes, it's not a sin to have doubt, since it's only natural. It's a sin to feel the infinite and still choose the finite. And France, Though going through the painful doubt, chooses faith and sticks by it till the end. I have this feeling inside me. But I can't do what I believe is wrong. Do you have a right to do this? Do I have a right not to? All these are also manifested in the form of the film and shouldn't be reduced to story, since the story is only a part of the form and the form is based on uncountable organic parts that make the sum, that is form. And choosing to study a chain of parts would inevitably leave out these changed connections to the excluded ones. But for the sake of analysis, I will mention a handful of these chains. The main visual characteristic of the film is the usage of wide-angle lenses in most of the shots. In normal spatial distances, these lenses accentuate physical separation between bodies and nature. But whenever characters are close together or close to the camera, a kind of visual distortion occurs that implies a rather spiritual connection between material beings. A connection that refers to oneness between people and people and nature. There is a powerful scene toward the end of the film where France and his wife see each other for the last time, and Fanny, the lawful wife, expresses her sympathy for France. Guards do not let them to hug each other. But when they stand in front of each other, Maddox blocking clearly implies a connection between the two, which is above material or physical connection. Malik smartly and without disturbing continuity uses telephoto lenses to emphasize the connection in a film that we're used to separation caused by wide lenses. Just like the last previous films of Malik, A Hidden Life uses minimal dialogue. This has a reason besides putting strength on visuals. If you pay attention, even in the scenes that two characters are talking, Malik breaks the dialogue by using jump cuts or cutting sentences in the middle. Dialogues become something like internal monologue, like characters are talking to their conscience or justifying their decisions and actions. In this way, Malik gets around the lying and physical nature of language used for daily life and gets closer to the minds and inner reality of characters. The truth that France doesn't throw away for the sake of worldly life. Here you can feel the poetic enigma of life, poetry that logical life imposed by society tries to ignore, but you can feel it deep inside you and in your relationship with other people just like France does, and Malik successfully translates this underlying poetry of everyday life to cinematic language. Film convinces us that France has made the right decision, whereas his decision goes against any common logic. So this is art at its best, creating new meaning or changing the ones we had. As said before, France isn't immune to suffering. His suffering is in the form of doubt, so his soul wanders around and camera follows his motion, which looks like a dance in search of eternity. The search of movement transcends time and space, and Malik's direction moves us smoothly through them. Music and soundtrack act like a bridge between this continuous time and space, 
and by creating a hypnotic atmosphere makes us move fluidly in jump cuts. This hypnotic and fluid state is what makes us watch the three hour long movie which has no traditional plot points without feeling time. Film uses exotic and beautiful imagery in most scenes but never falls in the trap of being convinced and relying on beautiful imagery like many other movies in the modern world cinema. Here, the beauty is a device to go beyond it and reach the meaning and feel the infinite. This does not happen by being symbolic, but through defamiliarization. Malik shows us what lies in and beyond all these beautiful beings we encounter every day and past them simply as beautiful and leisurely objects. Malik's artistic efforts take on a journey of infinite and we feel something that can't be explained. Like France, who is incapable of explaining his decisions, you can just feel it and accept it humbly.